Right here we have a litter of five and a half week old Lycan Shepherd puppies, F2s. Over there's my teacup Yorkie Herschel. And of course the beautiful Tammy. Hi guys. I'm going to film uh, another feeding today with the puppies. Just a moment. Here I have uh, four whole frozen fish. I'm going to feed them uh, the fish whole today instead of cut in half because uh, they're doing very well with it uh, so far cut in half. Now these puppies are uh, large and advanced. Uh, if these were my bulldog puppies, uh, it would be uh, for uh, a few more weeks at least until I was doing them. So you have to take some of that. Look at them, they're down there, they want it. You have to take some of that uh, in account uh, when, when you see what I'm doing here. So these fish are large, whole, and frozen. I'm feeding them in large pieces, so uh, it's uh, Floyd down there uh, disciplined in the puppy. Show them, Tammy, so they can see. Herschel. Herschel, I mean. But uh, I feed them in large, uh, whole pieces, so uh, uh, they can chew them up properly. I'm teaching the puppies to chew at this time. Uh, for the first couple weeks, I really mince and dice up the food, and then I progress to larger pieces like this and uh, this is to teach them to chew. Thank you for your help, Tammy. I appreciate it. Of course. This is also teaching the puppies to eat in a group as a pack. Now again, we purposely are feeding them whole pieces that are too uh, large for them to swallow whole. And we're feeding it frozen because that's going to force them both to, uh, or both of those are going to force them to have to chew off bite-sized pieces. We're training them to do that. That can be a problem with some dogs that are fed kibble that are switched over to raw. Is they, they haven't learned to properly chew their food and they tend to be gulpers and they gulp things down. Also, because these puppies are chewing, are uh, teething, much like a baby, uh, they, they enjoy chewing on something frozen. That right there is Puko. He's one of my keepers. Raw bones are perfectly safe for your dogs. It's only cooked bones that are dangerous. Cooking the bone changes the consistency of the bone and makes it prone to both uh, obstructions and uh, perforations of the bowel. Raw bones don't do that. But you want to make sure that your dog or cat is chewing up those bones enough so they can be properly digested. Again, chewing is the first step to digestion. My friend Gary and Amy's pup crow. He's gonna be a handsome boy. Now again, these puppies are uh, F2s in the Lycan Shepherd project, meaning they're second generation. Now to most people, these puppies would just be mixed breed crosses. But again, these ha they have been specifically bred and produced for the Lycan Shepherd project. And uh, we have a uh, line breeding program that's been devised 
that over the next uh, several generations should help us begin to set a uh, breed type, both physically and temperament wise. So for those who are wondering what a Lycan Shepherd is, it's a new breed in the early stages of development, intended to be a working breed. In the foundation we are using some Blue Bay Shepherds, some working line German Shepherds, and some Malinois. And then after a few generations we'll uh, decide what direction we need to go from there. I am the creator of the Renaissance Bulldog. Spent 25 years developing that breed. It's a healthy working breed of Bulldog. If you'd like to learn more about that, I've got plenty of links in the video description that'll tell you all about it. it shows photos of the dogs working over the last 25 years. You can see the progress of the deep breed's development. For those who will say, well, how come Herschel's hanging out over there and he's not eating the raw fish? Well, that's because Herschel's spoiled and he's used to having the food chopped up and given to him by mom, so. <laughs> you can see he's 100% uh, Tammy's dog. He's like her shadow. <laughs> That's why you typically don't see the Yorkies much in the videos. They are my wife and daughter's dogs. And that's who they're usually hanging out with. That's uh, Herschel telling the puppy to uh, Give him a little respect in space. Having a small dog like that is uh, really an awesome tool for uh, teaching uh, large breed dogs to respect small dogs. He's like a uh, grouchy old grandpa teaching the grandkids to stay in line. little uh, car there my buddy and again we'll let them chew on this stuff for about a half hour to an hour and then uh, we'll dice up some of what's left for them and uh, give the rest to the adult dogs Kurgan is over there uh, eating right now looks like he just finished off and uh, all the other dogs are in the house uh, eating right now too it's feeding time That's Amy's pup crow. He's the one that had a little bit of pine sap cut off his fur. Somebody got their cheek. Somebody got their cheek bit while they were biting for the same piece. puppies while they're eating. Teaches them not to be food aggressive. Just trying to play keep away from K-Bar there. This is a very 
important, especially if you have children to handle your dogs when they're eating. It desensitizes them to human touch. As a former animal warden, one of my jobs used to be to uh, deal with biting dogs and their victims. And uh, I can tell you from first-hand experience of seeing plenty of children that have been bitten badly in situations that could have easily been avoided that this is really something you should be doing. You guys realize there's another one here, right? The little girl there. That's Crow on the left going to Gary and Amy. They're my good friends I got uh, Lobo and Kurgan from. Now I cut the uh, sharp uh, dorsal and tail fins off these guys, the spikes. I don't do that for the adults, it's not necessary, but for these guys being still young, I do. For catfish and bullheads for my adults, I do re remove the spikes on those. And again, this is teaching the puppies to chew up their food properly. Plus it's giving them a lot of the needed oral stimulation they need as teething puppies. I said I'll take that. If you'd learn, like to learn more about how to feed the raw diet, I've left plenty of vet links in the uh, video description, along with two books by uh, veterinarian Ian Billinghurst who created the BARF diet which is an acronym for biologically appropriate raw foods. He wrote a couple of really good books I also linked in the description that I highly recommend called Give Your Dog a Bone and Grow Your Pups with Bones. For those who ask what kind of fish is that, this is tilapia. I feed them uh, all different types of fish. I avoid feeding salmon and trout because they could contain a uh, particular type of parasite that could be uh, deadly to dogs. Look up uh, salmon poisoning in dogs if you'd like to learn more about that. If you do decide to feed salmon and trout, they must be frozen deeply for seven days to kill that parasite. Regular fish only needs to be frozen in three days and any parasites that they carry are not deadly and can be easily taken care of with the worming. But again if frozen three days that's not an issue. As to where I get my fish, well I, there's a number of places you can look. Sam's Club is sometimes a good spot Office Depot, or should I say Restaurant Depot, not Office Depot, is another good spot. <laughs> and uh, Asian markets in your area are good spots to buy whole fish. And any other fish marts or anything. I'm always looking for deals and buying in bulk because uh, I do have several dogs to feed. So. Oh, poop goes uh, smart one here. He took his off uh, eating alone and he's ripping into the stomach. Again, it's hard to believe these are uh, five week old puppies. They're gigantic. They seem to be uh, way advanced for their age compared to any other litters I've had. And uh, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never seen a bit litter this advanced. Have you, Tammy? No. 
I mean, super smart. Yeah, I mean these. Immediately. Yeah, and even just uh, mobility wise, I mean they're running around like eight week old puppies. They're eating food that I would normally be feeding. You know, th this isn't something I would normally be doing until my puppies were, like I said, seven eight weeks old. Which you can see me doing with past litters, but these guys are so large and advanced that they're they're taking care of this like it's nothing. They've been eating raw fish now for uh, uh, about four days. Started them uh, right after they turned uh, five weeks, and uh, you can see that video uh, on the channel if you want. I highly recommend it. It's good, <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> How could it not be? It has the beautiful Tammy in it. <laughs> in the and that's one of my keepers, Mr. Kbar. I'll do a video in the future uh, telling you uh, how I made my decision on those puppies, the ones I want to hang on to. I'm breeding for... Uh, and looking for some very specific traits in this litter that I want to pass on to the next generation and I'm able to recognize uh, those pretty early on though I have to say every puppy in this litter is a nice puppy there's not a spooky scary puppy in the litter they're all extremely outgoing and confident and all very smart I'm, uh, I'm amazed now I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the uh, super dog program that I implemented on the dogs from uh, 3 to 16 days old. Again, I have videos on the channel that talk about that as well if you take a look. That really makes a huge difference in the development of your dogs. But I've been doing that for years and these guys are way more advanced than again any litter I've had and I've done that with other litters so there's just something special about these guys. They just uh, they happen to get the right combination of genes. I'm excited to watch them all grow. Tammy Shadow. also teaching them social behavior. It's teaching them to be and eat in a group. They're also slowly over the next few weeks going to develop a pecking order and a hierarchy between them and it's doing exercises like this that uh, help develop and maintain that. That's Puko, or that's Puko by the way. And uh, funny that uh, so cute. he's bringing it up onto the orange mukbang palette with his dad in the background there to uh, shoot his first mukbang. <laughs> that was pretty cute, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's Kurgan. He just ate three fish, and uh, you can tell he's waiting for these guys to uh, finish up so he can come up and clean up the uh, residue. But my dogs all live in the house. He's merely in the kennel because he was eating, and uh, I want to separate him from the puppy as well, so the puppies can take their time and eat. See that over there? That's Herschel teaching the puppies some respect. And little dogs are awesome for that. He's not being mean to him. He's not hurting him. Again, think of him as a grouchy grandpa teaching the grandkids manners. Herschel is a member of the pack, a senior member of the pack, and he's done this with all the dogs here. That includes Kurgan, Ulu, Lobo. Again, he's a great training tool.
If you ever have any old garden hoses that uh, have a hole in them, some uh, helpful advice. You can cut them up into sections and tie knots in them, and uh, they make great dog toys. The dogs love them. So uh, that's what the garden hose with the knots in them are. The puppies uh, play with them. If you like to recycle, there's a helpful tip. Again, that's my buddy Puko, or I mean uh, K Bar. It's a little girl. Now, the ones that had the tail that goes up and curls like that, Kurgan had that same tail as a puppy, and as he got older, it straightened out, which uh, surprised me a bit. But yeah, if you go back and look at his uh, early videos from about eight weeks on, he looks the same way. These guys look like little Kurgan clones. I mean, they, they all do, totally. It's a little girl. hanging on to the fish trying to bite and another one tries to bite the fish and they, they catch the puppy's nose. Your nose okay there little buddy? Yeah. Well, that's little K-Bar. slowly making headway on it and that's what we want. We want them to slowly gnaw off bite sized pieces. In a minute, you'll get to clean up in a minute. It's like I want the fish now. <laughs> Raw whole fish makes up about 50% of my dog's diet. The remaining 50% is made up of uh, chicken, turkey, beef, and uh, occasional uh, venison and rabbit, sometimes some Cornish game hen. But they get a wide, though uh, fish is probably my favorite protein forest source for them because I think it's the healthiest. And it's a complete nutritional package, you know, it's got the uh, meat, bones, and organs all included. Even if you get by fish that's been gutted, it still has brains and eyes in it which are very healthy also. And uh, it's full of all kinds of uh, beneficial oils. You know, you, you can see all my dog's coats uh, are uh, really shiny and vibrant in my videos of my adults. Except when they're blowing them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm leaving. That is so cute.
That's my bucket and scoop. That's where all the dog waste goes. K-Bar, he's always going from different food source to food source, having a sample. Always checking everything out. Probably the most inquisitive pup in the litter. One of the reasons why I'm hanging on to him. Yeah, that's him on the left there. Love that pup. He goes in and for the steal. Again, he's like his mom Ulu that way. <laughs> what a cutie. Oh my god. so bad. Herschel, nothing's even coming out. Why are you lifting your leg? Yeah. Well, there's a smart one. He took it up underneath the stairs. <laughs> the stairs over there. Nothing's coming up, buddy. You're empty. He's like, Mom, when are you taking me in and chopping up some fish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you hungry too? Well, there you go. This has gotten pretty long. I think I'm going to wind it out here. Basically, what's going to happen is they're going to keep gnawing on this for quite a while. And uh, eventually, when they're done, I'm going to dice it up uh, a portion of it and feed that to them and give the rest to Ulu and Kurgan to polish off. Bye from the beautiful Tammy. Bye, guys. The mother of dragons. <laughs> like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell down below. You get email notifications when my new videos come out. Bye.
ways to deal with each other. You can see some of the benefits of doing this. Okay, what you have here are just some comments. Establishing their pecking order within the group. And look who just stole it. Not the vocal one. Again, I love watching the interaction of dogs and puppies. It shows you some of the benefits of doing this. These dogs are learning constructive problem solving skills. Again, that's a good way to look at this type of stuff. They're learning conflict resolution skills. Again, like, subscribe, and share. That's all. Bye.